Welcome to another episode of 9 to 5 Mac Weekly, where the only thing worse than Siri is paying for Siri. I'm your host, Miles Somerville, and man, this month is gonna be expensive because Apple just revealed the brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros along with AirPods 3. So today we're gonna break down everything that these new laptops have to offer. Apple really kicked off the event with the bang. Remember that voice assistant that you don't use? Well, now Apple's offering a $5 a month plan that allows you to search for music within Apple Music using Siri, the voice assistant that you don't use. The voice plan. With this new plan, use only your voice. And the power of Siri. To access every song. Every playlist. And every station in Apple Music across all your Apple devices. For just $4.99 a month. Hmm. They also revealed three new colors for the HomePod Mini, and I think this was only inevitable. And I also think that they chose a really nice set of colors to match some of their other products like the 24 inch M1 iMac. Pricing will be the same and they'll be shipping sometime in November. Apple then went on to finally unveil the AirPods 3 and it's pretty much everything the leaks have been saying. The design is very reminiscent of the AirPods Pro but without the silicone ear tips. And essentially the major features here outside of the redesign are spatial audio with dynamic head tracking as well as an adaptive EQ. We're also getting improved battery life and MagSafe compatible wireless charging. They're available to order only in white uh, for $179 and they'll be shipping next week. And overall, AirPods 3 isn't a super exciting product, especially given the fact that the major software feature is something that we've already got on an existing Apple product, just a more expensive Apple product, but it's cool to see these features trickling down. That's what software features, generally speaking, always do. And the fact that they're not hiking up the price even more is nice as well. That 179 price tag, these things are gonna fly off shelves. But now onto the good stuff. Apple finally unveiled the next step in the Apple Silicon transition and it's M1 Pro and M1 Max, not M1X. So that name can finally be put to bed. And this was a last minute rumor that we weren't sure of. So now it makes sense as to why there was a back and forth with the 32 gig versus 64 gig memory rumors. M1 Pro will have up to 32 gigs of memory and M1 Max will have up to 64. M1 Pro will come with either an eight or 10 core CPU with a 16 core GPU and up to 32 gigs of memory, like I said. You'll also be getting support for more Thunderbolt controllers and enhanced ProRes video encoding and decoding for video editing. M1 Max will be a 10 core CPU with either a 24 or 32 core GPU and with up to 64 gigs of memory. And besides that, the only differences between Pro and Max is the memory bandwidth. M1 Pro will have 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth and M1 Max will have 400. And those are insane numbers, but more or less what we expected these chips to be. And I'm not at all complaining about it so far. And if the real world performance pans out with what we expect these machines to be, you can expect 8K HDR videos from Jeff and I on the channel going forward. Now onto the MacBooks, Apple unveiled what's probably the craziest MacBook upgrade we've got in years. We've got the thinner bezels, all of the Pro Legacy ports back, the death of the touch bar, and yes, a notch. But let's break down everything we're actually getting here. The display is gonna be one of the best things about these new MacBook Pros. We can firstly see that they've done away with the MacBook logo on the bottom, shrunk the bezels all the way around, and added a notch. Now, this notch rumor was also super last minute, but it was being brought up heavily all weekend, and it's real. And honestly, I got over it with the iPhone relatively easily, and personally, it doesn't bother me at all here on the MacBook Pros. There's literally never anything ever happening at the top center portion of the display from a UI standpoint. And because these displays aren't a 16 by nine aspect ratio anyway, you've already got black borders present when watching content on MacBooks. So not having a notch or having a notch doesn't really change the usability experience in any way. So I'm cool with this, but what do you guys think about it? Because of these thinner bezels, the smaller MacBook Pro now has a 14.2 inch display and the larger MacBook Pro now has a 16.2 inch display. And just on paper alone, these MacBook Pro panels are already the best you can get in a laptop right now. Both models will have ProMotion mini LED displays with up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content. Apple essentially brought the Pro Display XDR experience to the MacBook Pro minus the 16K resolution, and I cannot wait to see what these displays 
plays looked like in person for the first time. Just as all the rumors have pointed to, we've got the return of MagSafe, HDMI, and the SD card slot. And this is something we've pretty much been waiting for since 2016. It's finally confirmed to be returning. Also cool to point out that this is officially the first Mac utilizing Thunderbolt 4, which doesn't really offer much as far as an increase in performance is concerned, but it's great to see that each of these ports will have their own Thunderbolt controllers. And this means that you'll be able to max out the performance of each individual Thunderbolt device connected to the laptop. Apple didn't specify which version of HDMI the MacBook Pros are gonna have, but according to the website, it'll have support for one 4K display at up to 60 Hertz, which just sounds like HDMI 1.4, which is pretty disappointing, especially for professional users who are using higher end displays like 5K monitors or 4K 120 Hertz displays. There's not a lot of displays like that out there, but it's certainly a way to have these MacBook Pros be more future-proofed. And this isn't a deal breaker per se, because through the Thunderbolt ports, you'll still be able to connect up to two 6K displays at 60 Hertz with M1 Pro, or up to three 6K displays at 60 Hertz with one 4K display at 60 Hertz with M1 Max. And that is pretty insane to be able to do that on a MacBook. It's honestly nearly overkill. And the SD card slot is a pretty big question mark as far as what kind of performance we should be getting out of it. There was a long running rumor from Luke Miani that said that there should be a UHS-2 compatible card slot. And UHS-2 is the current high speed option for SD cards. And if you have a UHS-2 SD card and the MacBook Pro doesn't, then you're just gonna be getting whatever speeds the MacBook Pro supports, which right now, we really don't know. Apple pretty much gave zero detail on how fast it's gonna be, but even if it's only UHS-1, it's still cool to have the SD card slot back. It's a convenient port. Getting MagSafe back is a huge win for the MacBook Pro, and especially because it's technically optional. You don't have to use it, as all three Thunderbolt ports are capable of regular charging. That's like the best part about it. And they made a change to the keyboard's design, which is also pretty interesting, as it's now been completely blacked out. You no longer have the aluminum trim going between the keys. And I wonder if that was done to purposely make these keyboards easier to replace without having to get a whole new chassis. I guess we'll have to wait for the iFixit report. And then of course the touch bar is finally dead and the function keys are back in action. And I honestly never cared for the touch bar that much. So this is a good change if you ask me, just keeping it simple and giving pro users what they want. And speaking of other things we want, a better webcam. And we finally got one in these new MacBook Pros. A 1080p webcam in a Pro laptop shouldn't be really celebrated, but I'm personally very happy to see these garbage webcams that we had on the previous MacBooks before be eliminated. And I assume this will more or less be the same quality camera as what we've got in the 24 inch M1 iMac. We've also got a new six speaker sound system for both 14 and 16 inch models with support for spatial audio and Dolby Atmos and a new studio quality mic system for both models that should be a notable improvement over the Intel models. And we already knew the battery life on these new laptops would be killer, but Apple basically confirmed it. These new MacBook Pro should have up to 21 hours of battery life, 17 hours of video playback, 11 hours of web browsing, and you'll be getting either a 67 watt fast charger with M1 Pro or a 96 watt fast charger with M1 Max. So starting at $2,000, $1999, you'll be able to get the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an eight core M1 Pro in either space gray or silver. And the 16 inch M1 model will start at $2,499 and come in the same colors with a 10 core M1 Pro processor. And from there, you'll be able to spec either models to a 10 core M1 Pro or choose between multiple configurations of M1 Max. And once M1 Max is chosen, you'll be able to get up to 64 gigs of memory in either model. Then both 14 and 16 inch pros will have up to eight terabytes of solid state storage, which is obviously insanely expensive to upgrade to. But that's the new MacBook Pros. They're available to order right now and they should start shipping next week. And I've got my order in for a 14 inch M1 Max model, which hopefully comes in the next week or so. These are obviously more expensive than the previous Intel models, but I can't argue with what they brought to the table, quite honestly. And if the real world performance pans out, then the pricing will be solidified even further if you ask me. And although I'm a little bummed that we didn't get a new Mac mini at this event as well, these machines are expensive enough. And so I'm fine with, you know, a 14 inch MacBook Pro for now. But what do you guys think about these new MacBooks? And are they everything you hope they would be? And even more so, are you gonna order one? Let us know in the comment section down below. And please do make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be having reviews for all of these new MacBook models. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.